topic is uh, the root and its modifications. What is meant by root? What is meant by root? Root is a part of the body below the soil. The root is a part of the body below the soil. And uh, how many types of root? roots are there? Number one is a tap root system. This is a tap root system. Here, clearly we are seeing the tap root system. And uh, number two is a fibrous root system. So two types of root systems are present. Number one tap root system. Number two is the fibrous root system. And what is meant by root modification? Roots in some plants will change their shape and structure and become modified to perform different functions other than the absorption and conduction of water and minerals is known as a root modification. So what is meant by root modification means the roots in some plants will change their shape and structure and become modified to perform different functions other than the absorption and conduction of water and minerals. That is known as a root modification. So, different kinds of root modifications are there. Number one is a storage roots. So, storage roots means what they store food materials in them. They store food materials in them. For example, tap root, this is a one type of tap root. For example, carrot. So, this carrot will store the food material in them. That's why this type of roots are known as a storage roots. And adventitious root is also there. For example, sweet potato. And next, prop roots are pillar roots. Prop roots means the roots which arises from the branches, which arises from the branches and hang freely in the air and fixes in the atmosphere, for example, banya. So, the roots which arises from the branches and hang freely in the air and fixes in the soil, they are known as a prop roots or pillar like roots. Pillar means they will give support to the plant. That's why they are known as pillar like roots. And for example, that is banyan tree. Next, third one is stilt roots. What is meant by stilt roots? This one is stilt root. The roots arises at the lower parts of the stem. Here in the stilt roots means the roots arises from the lower parts of the stem and it gives mechanical support to the plant and it gives mechanical support to the plant. They are known as stilt roots. They are known as stilt roots. For example, maize and sugar cane. Next and the fourth one is nematophores or respiratory roots. Nematophores, nematophores are respiratory roots. Actually, these roots will arise in the plants which grow in swampy areas and they will come out of the ground and grow vertically upwards to respire or to receive oxygen. They are known as a nematophores. So, in some of the plants, the roots arise as a nematophores. For example, mangrove plants like Rhizophora and Abyssinia. So, in some plants which are present in swampy areas, they will come out of the 
ground and grows vertically upwards and then they will receive the oxygen or they will respire by receiving oxygen. So they are known as a nematophores or respiratory roots, for example, Lysophora and Avicenia. Next, velamen roots are epiphytic roots. Velamen roots are epiphytic roots. In this velamen uh, roots, actually the plants which grow on the branches of a big tree, the plants which grow on the branches of a big tree contains uh, some roots to receive sunlight and they hang freely in the air to absorb moisture and atmosphere are known as a velamen roots or epiphytic roots. For example, vanda. For example, vanda. So the plants which grow on the branches of other big tree to receive sunlight and they have roots to absorb moisture from the atmosphere. They are known as velamen roots or epiphytic roots, for example, vanda. Next, photosynthetic roots. Actually, in this roots, the stems and the leaves are completely absent. So there is no possibility of photosynthesis. So, in that roots, or in that plants, the roots are green in color. Green in color. So, green means what? They will, if green color presents in that roots, what will happen? They can able to do the function of photosynthesis. So, that roots are nothing but photosynthetic roots. For example, tineophyllum. For example, tineophyllum. And next, nodular roots. And next, nodular roots. Actually, what is meant by nodules? What is meant by nodules? In some of the plants, for example, in the family of Fabaceae, the roots will show nodule like structures like this. The roots will show nodule like structures. In that nodule like structures, the rhizobium bacteria are present. That rhizobium bacteria which are present in the root nodules will fix the atmospheric nitrogen in the soil. Atmospheric nitrogen in the soil. So that, that the plants can able to grow very rapidly. So this process is nothing but symbiosis and the root nodules and the rhizobium bacteria are the participants in the symbiosis process. So they are known as the symbionts. So that root nodules will contain the rhizobium bacteria and they fixes that rhizobium bacteria will fix the atmospheric nitrogen in the soil. So this process is known as symbiosis and uh, this type of uh, roots, uh, for example, family is a uh, Fabaceae family and uh, these roots are known as uh, nodular roots. Nodular roots is a nodules. And uh, next and last, parasitic roots. What is meant by parasites? The plants which depend on other plants, either food, for food or shelter, whatever it may be. The plants which depend on other plants for food and water and minerals, that plants are nothing but parasitic plants are pastoral plants. In these parasitic plants, there are two kinds. Number one is complete parasites. Why they are known as complete parasites? Because, because they don't have any leaves. So they are leafless plants. They are leafless plants. For example, cascata. Actually, if leaves are absent, what will happen? There is no 
performing a photosynthesis. So in that uh, plants, uh, the astorial roots uh, will penetrate into the, into the xylem and phloem of the host plant to receive water and, our, and also the minerals and also the food material. So xylem and phloem. Xylem will conduct the water and that means uh, through xylem vessels only that water will reach us towards the uh, stem regions and uh, uh, all body parts of the plant. So here leafless plants, they are leafless plants. That's why that the hastorial roots will penetrate into the xylem and the phloem of the host plants. That's why uh, to receive, they have to receive that uh, uh, penetrate uh, roots will receive the food materials along with the water. That's why they are known as a complete parasites. For example, Cascata and the partial parasites. Actually, these partial parasites uh, will contain leaves. So, if leaves are present, what will happen? So, what will happen is uh, if leaves present means uh, they will do photosynthesis. So, they will perform photosynthesis. So, in this uh, type of uh, partial parasite uh, plants, uh, the hastorial roots uh, will penetrate only through the xylem to receive the water only, to receive the water and minerals. So there is no need of food materials. So that's why these type of parasites are known as partial parasites. For example, striga. Striga. Actually, for public examinations, they will ask what is root and write the different kinds of food, modifications of root. So, in this manner, there are eight types of uh, root modifications are there, but uh, in these eight, uh, they will ask only any six of the root modifications uh, along with the examples, along with the diagrammatic representation. So, this diagrammatic representation is also very essential. They will give three marks for diagrams, and uh, five marks for total this uh, essay question. So this is very important for first year public examinations of uh, intermediate botany. So if you like this video, please subscribe my channel. Thank you to all.